Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sir Optimus International. This session will concentrate on CSW 67 review theme, challenges and opportunities in achieving gender equality and the empowerment of rural women and girls. Our session is entitled Opening Doors to a Bright Future, Education, Empowerment, Enabling Rural Women. And our speakers will demonstrate how this is being achieved globally through the work of our members in our five federations. Rural women play a key role in supporting their households and communities, in achieving food and nutrition security, generating income, and improving rural livelihoods and overall well-being. They contribute to agriculture and rural enterprises and fuel local and global communities. As such, they are active players in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Yet every day around the world, the situation of women and girls in rural areas is challenging. They face persistent structural constraints that prevent them, as well as those of others around them. Rural women and girls suffer disproportionately from gender-based discrimination. They face greater pressure than their urban peers to adhere to traditional practice and customs. For example, early marriage, FGM. Their opportunities are limited by the broader development context and by specific local factors such as isolation and remoteness. Some of these relate to gender inequality, which is a major cause and effect of poverty and hunger. It is estimated that 60% of the chronically hungry people are women and girls, and 80% of the world's poor live in rural areas and work mainly on farming. On average, women make up 43% of the agricultural labour force in developing countries. For example, women in sub-Saharan Africa collectively spend about 40 billion hours a year collecting water. This negatively impacts women's employment and girls' education opportunities. When rural girls are more likely to be out of school than those who live in urban areas. Lack of education can lead to limited access to employment and income, as well as exclusion from political and civic leadership, leaving women and girls behind. Girls forced into early marriage may not have access to continuing education, even if secondary education is available to the girls. They may be missing it due to lack of adequate toilet facilities or taboos around menstruation. This afternoon, we are going to hear from our federations how seroptimist projects across the world build the resilience and capacity building of rural women and girls to enable them to reach social and economic independence. May I now pass you over to Lee Elwood Brown, our SI Director of Advocacy, who will moderate our session today. Over to you, Lee. Thank you, International President Maureen. I would like to now continue on and introduce uh, opening Doors to a Bright Future, which is our international uh, President's Appeal by President Maureen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Maureen McGuire, and I am President of Sir Optimus International. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a couple of the projects within the SI President's Appeal 2021 to 2022. The focus of the SI President Appeal is that of education because I believe that education can help many women and girls overcome the barriers that they face in life. I'm going to explain today how the program is helping rural women in Cambodia and what we hope will help young girls and women in Uganda. The objectives of the appeal are to provide access to education and training for disadvantaged and marginalized women and girls to provide education for women and girls in a safe, friendly and stimulating environment where there is equality of opportunity and support for all, developing self-confidence, self-esteem and making themselves feel valued through mentoring programs, enable women, particularly the most vulnerable and excluded in society, to access information, resources and services that they need to make positive life choices and to break down barriers to learning and participation for women so that they may become fully active citizens and equipped to pass on their experiences to benefit their families and the broader communities. The first project commenced on the 1st of January 2022 in the Simreap region of Cambodia. Simreap is a cluster of small villages along a river of the same name. 
The villages were originally developed around the Buddhist pagodas, and in this area, girls are less likely to receive secondary education, and women, especially those widowed or one parent family, find it difficult to retain their land. We had estimated a target of 2,000 women, but at the end of year one, 31st of December 2022, we had 2,814 women and girls who applied and were accepted on the course. They have been trained in many things. Gender equality, microfinancing and budgeting, self-esteem and self-confidence, health, small business enterprises, and much more. A team of smart women has been established and they will make the project sustainable. But more importantly, they advocate on behalf of the women and girls to solve many issues, such as land rights, divorce, domestic violence. Our project works with many newly wedded women, female headed households and students to train them in the various aspects of making themselves financially independent, increasing the knowledge and professional life skills of women and girls so that they can become leaders and benefit financially. Let us now listen to one of these women. <laughs> អើមានអាយុ <coughs> ពេលដែលបងបានរោចនោះបន្ថែមសម្រាប់ជួយគ្រួសារបងខ្ញុំមានមតនាភាពទៅលើខ្លួនឯងដែលខ្ញុំបានរោចនោះខ្លះដើម
um, have an income. So they are being trained in skills as well. We had a baseline uh, assessment carried out, and this was the first step that they took to identify candidates for the scholarship. The manager, Claire, actually visited 491 families. And in these families, 187 girls had dropped out for many reasons, dropped out of school. Uh, some of them are extreme poverty, unable to pay the school fees. Some was that they became pregnant at a very early age. And when you become pregnant, you're immediately taken out of school and you stay at home. Another reason could have been the sickness of a family member, or perhaps they were just actually, in fact, uh, needed at home. So this investment in programs is going to help rural women and girls who are living in challenging socioeconomic conditions in order so that they can build marketable skills, start small businesses, and hopefully secure fair wages with ethical work. Because we believe that when women have the power to make their own money and have control over how they use it, not only does this empower them economically, but it is also one of the best ways to help reduce global poverty. Research consistently shows that women who spend up to 90% of their income earnings on things that directly affect their children and families Prioritizing things like healthier food, safe water, school feeds and medicines, because when women thrive economically, their children are empowered and protected. I would like to thank you for listening, and I'm sure that you will agree with me that education can remove barriers and it will ensure that women and girls in rural areas can have the same opportunities as those living in urban towns and cities. Very interesting work in both Cambodia and also Uganda, showing the rural women and wonderful to see them reacting and being so happy that they are actually able to lead and also support their families. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce um, the Seroptimist International of the Americas Federation and President Stephanie Smith presenting. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm President Stephanie Smith of Seroptimus International of the Americas, and I'm really excited to be presenting on behalf of SIA today about the impact our dream programs have on economic empowerment for women and girls, particularly in rural areas. SIA was founded in 1921, and our volunteer members serve their communities throughout North America, Latin America, and the Pacific Rim. Our members provide women and girls with access to the education and training they need to achieve economic empowerment. Despite making many great strides since SIA's founding, women and girls still face obstacles to their success like gender-based discrimination, violence, and unequal opportunities. This is intensified by additional obstacles like poverty, racism, and living in rural, under-resourced communities. Women and girls in rural areas often face increased challenges, such as a lack of access to basic services and insufficient job opportunities. Our century of impact has taught us that education is the key to unlocking economic empowerment for women and girls. When women and girls are educated, they have opportunity, choice, and power to make healthy decisions for themselves and their families. Access to education is the most effective way toward empowerment, and our dream programs are how we deliver access to education. The Live Your Dream Award is unique. Clubs provide funds directly to women who are the financial head of their household and enrolled in an education program. We trust women and believe that they can determine the best way to use those dollars to support their education. For women in rural areas, that may be fixing their car so that they can get to school or even relocating to be closer to campus. About two thirds of our award recipients go into helping professions, teaching, social work, 
health care, and more, and frequently return to their underserved communities to ensure that others can benefit from their education. While there are about 1,200 SIA clubs, there are many women who live in areas with no local club. This is especially true for women in rural communities who are not able to participate in our DREAM programs through no fault of their own. SIA headquarters introduced a program many years ago to help these women still have a chance to receive a Live Your Dream Award. We call these the SIA HQ Awards. Women in the US and Canada who live more than 75 miles from their nearest club can submit their application to our headquarters office. 50 women will receive the award this year, many of them from rural areas. Dream It Be It has reached over 98,000 girls since it launched in 2014. And our clubs work with girls to provide them with the information and resources they need to be successful through our award-winning seven-part curriculum. This helps to put girls on a path to prepare for thriving careers and avoid the obstacles that can derail them. For many girls, Dream It Be It can help to inform them about entire career paths that they were not exposed to in their communities. And this is especially crucial for girls in rural areas. Because our members are part of these communities and know intimately the challenges that women and girls may be facing, they can understand and meet their needs. They can adjust the Dream It Be It curriculum to speak to issues of interest to the girls they're working with or distribute Live Your Dream Awards based on educational training needed in the community. The focus of the Dream programs of increasing economic empowerment for women and girls is rooted in the agenda for women's equality outlined by the United Nations through the Sustainable Development Goals. The DREAM programs directly contribute to the achievement of the five SDGs you see here. A wonderful example of a club responding to local needs and reaching rural women is SI Victoria West Shore in the Western Canada region and their new Quetlaw Award, which is a Big Goal Accelerator project. Big Goal Accelerators are club projects that increase access to education for women and girls, but are not the dream programs. The idea for this award first came about as members saw the importance of supporting Indigenous women who are pursuing education, as these women face greater barriers and challenges. The criteria for the new award and the award name were determined in consultation with Indigenous partners. The applicants answer questions about their traditional roles on the land where they grew up, their financial situation, and the traditional name they carry. Awardees are eligible to apply for the Live Your Dream Award as well to receive further support. Applications have come from across Western Canada and from some very small rural towns indicating that there is a great need. SI Victoria West Shore is making an incredible impact through their Quetlaw Award. Because SIA's clubs work in their own communities, we can reach farther and provide the most crucial supports for women and girls. Clubs know their communities and how to best respond to the needs of women and girls to access education, especially considering rural challenges. We look forward to realizing our vision that all women and girls have access to the resources and opportunities to reach their potential and live their dreams. Thank you for your time. Um, and now we move on to another federation, one of our brand new, uh, this is our brand new federation, Soroptimist International of Africa uh, by the president, Jalila. Thank you, Jalila. Africa Federation is delighted to present successful Soroptimist projects to achieve gender equality and empowerment of rural women and girls who continue to face discrimination, inequalities, and marginalization. The road to gender equality and equal opportunities is still long, 
But through this presentation, you will see how African solar optimists are helping these women to go beyond the destiny that was predicted for them. You will see how African solar optimists contribute to improve in the lives uh, of these women and young girls and how they open up new and limitless perspectives to them. The African Federation of Solar Optimists International was born on 2020. It currently comprises five regions and exists in 23 African countries. SIAF is 104 clubs and more than 2,000 clubs members. There are many actions to educate and enabling and empowering young girls and women across Africa. But let me show you some examples like this one in Uganda, eastern region of Africa, which is consists to learn to young girls how to make reusable sanitary napkins during their periods and learn them uh, that periods are not a reason not to go to school. In the Western region, and more specifically in Benin, the Soroptimi sister of the uh, Ekotonu Sika Or Club were sensitive to the situation of village called Jegbaji, uh, that means city of salt. It is a small landlocked village surrounded by a lagoon and accessible only by boat. The village no longer had for several months dedicated transport for the crossing to the primary school. As the school is no longer functional, it will be closed at start uh, of the 2022-2023 school year. Our Soroptimist sister from the SE Cotonou Sika Or Club offered three small boats and school material to primary school students in order to avoid the, the, shader, the shadowed the closure of the village primary school. In Central Region, Soropmi sister from Yaoundé Club, Cameroon, donated the Green Dean machine, among other gifts, to 325 rural women. The Green Dean machine is, not, is to enable those rural women to transform and preserve foods like cassava and corn. These women were enlightened on how to use these machines to process and transform cassava and to avoid food waste during the harvest season. Processing and transforming food serve as a source of sustainable livelihood, food security and income generation. Now let us uh, know what happened in southern region and precisely in SI Harare Club who donate four desktops and one laptop to a rural school which is located at about 125 kilometers outside the capital city of Harare with the aim of enabling, educating and capacitating primary school children. This will give equal access and gender equality as they embrace technology from an early age. In the northern region, Soropmi sister from SI Agadir Club offered to rural young girls who have benefited from a club scholarship during seven years, laptops to continue their studies in university. In another hand, SI Marrakesh from that club carries out several actions in the three E's projects, we must know, first of all, that this club has been working for more than 20 years on building and equipping a boarding house to welcome rural girls, bringing them closer to high school and university and offering them a quality of life and an optimal education. The boarding house offers food, lodging, study, and multimedia room, library, cultural and study, tutoring, dental and medical care, and all that is totally free of charge. In uh, 2022, the boarding house welcomed uh, around 220 young girls. Among them, 41 uh, young girls are educating in university level, and the club sur optimisme Marrakech Fondateur ensures their education in the digital age. Here are some examples. The borders, I mean those rural girls, discovered astrophysical world with Ukainden International School of Astrophysics during a conference on their boarding house. 
the Soroptimi sister of Marrakesh from that club made a meet and lecture the poet and astronaut, uh, Dr. Cyan Proctor, who was the first woman of color to pilot a spacecraft in orbit with the SpaceX mission. The SI Marrakesh Fondat Club made a partnership with Simplon Foundation, French foundation, uh, that has a program which called Africa Tech Bridge Program. They initiate kids to coding. Their main aim are to demystify digital through practical workshop, training in key digital skills to maintain employability, raising awareness of digital profession for young people aged from 8 to 16, and also feminizing the digital sector via coding initiation uh, workshop. The Soroptimist Club organized Zoom meeting with personality that could impact the younger and inspire them to stick to studies. A Zoom meeting organized at the boarding school with a Moroccan association called Inspiring Girls to present some role models. Uh, there, is, there was a Captain Couter Benatia, pilot and instructor at uh, Moroccan Airlines Royal Air Maroc, Professor Amal Fellah Sarouchni, researcher in uh, artificial intelligence at the CNRS in France, Mrs. Nawal Mutawakil, vice, vice president of the International Olympic Committee, Professor Najat Mukhtar, Deputy Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency in charge of nuclear sciences and their applications. They introduced themselves personally and told their stories, encouraging the little ones to dream, opening the doors to a world of all possibilities. They also could uh, meet uh, uh, Caesar project, uh, Mr. Abdelatif Renniwi, Green Energy Park. CISA means Smart Energy Solution for Africa project. Uh, the CISA project is a collaborative project between the European Union and nine African country, countries. The main idea is providing energy access technology. It consists, for example, on e-bikes or electric motorcycles. In conclusion, we can say that by investing in the education of rural women and girls and providing them with the resources and support they need, we can help them to achieve their full potential and contribute to a more sustainable and prosperous future for all. Thank you. Um, and now we would like to introduce our Soroptimist International of European Federation. And this speaker will be President Carolyn Demi and also their program director, Sandra Gonzalez-Gould. Thank you, Sandra and Carolyn. You are a true Soroptimist. The Soroptimists in the European Federation have been doing international projects where it comes to rural women for many, many years, especially back in time when clubs of Africa also still were member in the European Federation. The African clubs now being in their own federation, there is still a huge cooperation and ongoing exchange on projects between many countries inside and outside Europe certainly also with Africa. And now we gladly showcase a few examples. In this federation, we focus on improving lives for women and girls in five areas. Violence against women, health and food safety, sustainability, education, and empowerment. To connect this to this theme of this webinar, educating, empowering, enabling rural women, we want to inform you more in depth about three examples, examples of many projects carried out in our federation. Women for a Rural and Circular Economy by the club Martina Franca from Italy. Clean Water from Women to Women by the Union of Sweden and Clean Wells 
means clean water club of Chernihiv from Ukraine. Thank you. With this project, what is now shown on the screen is actually to give an answer, small, concrete and effective to both problems, uh, starting from convincing the precisely in time of crisis as of COVID and transition to a more sustainable way of working. The club and the project addressed women in the Valley Itria area in the southern Murgia region. It is really the southern part of Italy. They addressed it to both those who are already working in agriculture as entrepreneurs or workers and to those who are currently inactive and looking for a job. It really aims to encourage them to work within the new scenarios of sustainability and circularity of the rural and agriculture economy. At the end of a successful a cycle of five online seminars about prospects and opportunities for female entrepreneurship and employment in agriculture in rural areas, where over 250 persons participated, the club took the next step. They now invited female agriculture entrepreneurs of, our, uh, of these territory to propose an original, convincing and affordable idea of converting the rural uh, region into a circle and sustainable place. It was a contest to boost ideas and the winners were two women getting a capital, a start capital of 5,000 euro. This was done in partnership with the Regional AgriFund Foundation and local municipalities and the University of Bari and local cooperative credit banks. And now to another project. In many other developing countries in Africa and Asia, the water situation is really difficult. It is the women and girls of the family who are responsible for the water supply. That means that young women and girls are not able to go to school and women in the household are not able to go to work and then also not be able to financially contribute to the family or even having their own money. The Swedish Union has since 2012 a product in empowering women and girls by solution sun water, a solar safe water system. Solar water is an invention by women uh, and she is an engineer and she wanted to have a solution that could be for everyday life. Uh, this invention purifies polluted water through the sun's ultraviolet rays and heat. And the solar water contains of a double-sided double black plastic container where each side holds around five liters of water. In two to three hours, uh, the water is purified by heat and the ultraviolet rays of the sun. It is then both drinkable and can be used by cooking or for hygiene reasons. Evaluation shows that a family that has sun water becomes healthier, the children in the family can go to school, the cost of medication decreases and the woman can contribute to the family financially. Today, nearly 2,500 sun water have been distributed in the Seroptimist International Network. That means that nearly 25,000 clean water can be distributed to many families uh, and areas every day in, uh, in many countries. And now we're going to uh, look into a product from Ukraine. Over to you, Caroline. Clean wells mean clean water. Club of Chernihiv, Ukraine. Every third woman in Ukraine lives in a rural area. And this was before the war. The situation with wells supplying water to two villages in the area had become critical. Rural women and girls, in addition to facing multiple forms of gender-based discrimination, often suffer from multiple forms of discrimination in connection with their place of residence, age, displacement, or other factors. The Sir Optimist of Chernihiv mobilized to improve the living conditions of isolated women. 
doing so in collaboration with the Danish clubs. There is no centralized water supply system in this district. Therefore, the population use excavated wells. In summer, water disappears from most of the wells. This is caused by climate change and a lack of cleaning and maintenance. The Sir Optimist took concrete action to improve water supply. They hired specialists to pump out the wells, analyze the water and clean the wells. And they raised the attention of local governmental bodies and counted on their direct participation in the project. This was a project done in 2020, and we can only imagine how the current situation is for rural women. We would like to highlight the importance of not forgetting this vulnerable group. The destruction of infrastructure, closed borders with Russia and Belarus nearby, blocked seaports, mass migration, a reduction in purchasing power, shortage of fuel, shortage of fertilizer. Landmine contaminated woodland and pastries may significantly affect the livelihood of rural communities. Agriculture land is not among the top priorities for the mining, so farming activities may be impeded. The disruption of the agriculture planting season have cut the Ukrainian market in half. Entire crops were set on fire. Fields of grain devastated by fast spreading fires after the passage of the tanks. This once rich farmer has become a battlefield and left useless for the next harvest. We see the many pictures of bombed cities. Let's think about these rural women, once working in an agricultural area, now unsafe on a destructive battlefield full of mines. We also know that Ukraine is known for providing wheat and grain internationally huge amounts of their productions of feeding Africa. So this also affects, in a second degree, women and girls all over the world. The ships are still in harbor with the harvest and is affecting the food supply. The crops are not even reaching rural women in Africa due to shortage due that they are not able to afford the high prices of basic food. In addition, in Ukraine itself, as they are not able to export this crop, the women in Ukraine still manage to harvest some, even with the one at war, but they are not getting any income. We see an urgent need to help women in Ukraine in many ways also help the rural women. This can only be done via international help. Thank you very much, President Carolyn and Sandra. Now we go on to our next presentation and it's from uh, Sir Optimist International, Great Britain and Ireland. And it is on, the speaker will be Minetsky Danda. Thank you. Women, the silent rural powerhouse. As the world's second most populated country, India prides itself with abundant manpower. As a largely agricultural nation, most of this manpower resides in the rural area. Women form 75% of this workforce, but they are the silent work. A rural woman begins multitasking from a young age, attending to farm needs as well as the needs of the household. Whether the women work in the tea gardens or fruit farms or large rice or wheat field, she is the unpaid worker. The land and the environment are her lifeline. 
so protecting it comes to her naturally. The Chipko movement stalled the felling of precious forests of the Himalayan foothills by their affirmative action of hugging trees. Women make significant contributions to agricultural production, food, security and nutrition, land and natural resource management and building climate resilience. Much of their labor remains invisible and unpaid, even as their workloads become increasingly heavy due to the outmigration of men. Moreover, with the outmigration of the men folk, feminization of agriculture in the dry areas has been shown to make rural women more vulnerable to economic, social, and cultural marginalization. Besides, when men return, women are often disadvantaged in the process of renegotiating labor rules. While extreme poverty has declined globally, the world's 1 billion people who continue to live in unacceptable conditions of poverty are heavily concentrated in rural areas. Systemic social biases make women solely responsible for household chores. It is considered unmanly for a man to enter the kitchen or help with domestic work. Since the independence of India, labor laws, rights of women and inheritance laws have evolved slowly but surely to improve the status of women. Constitutional amendments have made several women-friendly laws. However, stereotypes and the rigid patriarchal structures of the rural societies leave women deprived of the benefits. The lack of literacy keeps them further shackled within social barriers. For rural women and girls, education is a game changer as they continue to face discrimination, inequalities and marginalization. Majority of rural women suffer not only from economic poverty but also from information poverty. Depriving the women and girls of education and knowledge is often a veiled way of retaining unpaid labor both for domestic use as well as for farming. Climate change and the havoc it causes impacts women more grievously. Migration of the men of the house or whole families due to environmental degradation amplifies inequalities. Soroptimist projects across the world build the resilience and capacity building of rural women and girls to enable them to reach social and economic independence. The Soroptimist mantra, educate, empower and enable. When a new Soroptimist club was born, a group of women gathered to impact the lives of women and girls in their rural communities. Following the Soroptimist mission and vision and the statement of rural women in the position papers. Goal 17 of the Sustainable Development Rules elaborates on partnership. SI Delhi took the cue and partnered with Mahila Chetna Kendra. Post-independence, there was a great desire and need to initiate social change for women particularly. One such reformer was Vinova Bhave, whose social activism was founded on a lifetime study of the spiritual traditions of India and of the other major world religions. He joined Gandhiji's non-violent movement. It was Providence, the ethos of Veena Devi's NGO matched the Soroptimist goals, and immediate bonding began to blossom. Getting the homebound women to come to the center was the first step. They came after finishing their farm and household chores. It was their eagerness to learn a new skill. For women, it was a new experience of meeting city women who wanted to help them. Such an interaction was broadening their horizons. The women and girls realized that they were allowed to step out and learn in limited ways. They took full advantage of the sewing classes arranged. For them, it was also time to connect with girls and be in a space away from the strictures and drudgery of household work. Exposure to social media, television has sharpened their dormant creativity in the swing classes. They found their own inspiration. In a small measure, the improvement of rural women's entrepreneurship skills through training in production, business management and functional literacy was taking place. The Soroptimists guided them to income generating opportunities with their new sewing skills. Since tailoring and dressmaking demand is booming, the women are dreaming of mini boutiques or taking orders for stitching. They were heading towards entrepreneurship. 
For the future, the Delhi Sur optimists have plans to include education in their projects. Simple ways of non-formal education, technical and vocational training, training in new technologies and literacy and numeracy training are needed to address the various challenges rural women face. The plans for future include awareness of life skills, information related to their rights, services and resources, and social protection. The aim is not to leave anyone behind, least of all the powerhouse of rural women. The rise in awareness, confidence and communication of the women at the centre as they interact with the Soroptimist is notable. When women lift women, change happens. Then it's time to celebrate the empowerment that will resound and impact future generations. A powerhouse that will not be silent. Oh, thank you. Um, I actually feel that we're being taken around the globe, literally, this morning. So this is a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much to Great Britain and Ireland. We now have challenges and opportunities in achieving gender equality by my own federation, uh, Soroptimist International of the Southeast Asia Pacific by Christine Johnston, President of the Federation. Thank you. It brings me much pleasure to introduce to you our projects that empower both rural women and girls. We are located in 13 countries across the Southeast Asia Pacific with a laser sharp focus on the issues affecting women and girls. Soroptimist International Southeast Asia Pacific or SEAF is one of the strongest women's organisations in the area with a member base of 2,300 women. Our members work in their own communities to identify local needs and opportunities and we follow the formula. Think globally, act locally. We target issues that highlight gender inequality and human rights objectives drive Sir Optimus projects and advocacy campaigns. But there is still a long way to go before women living in rural areas meet their social and economic potential in Asian countries. 107 million women live in Asian rural areas and a significant proportion of them are our youth. Statistics highlight the importance when of applying an agricultural and farming lens whenever possible to our projects. In Australia, 4% of women live in remote areas and 3% in very remote areas. And in New Zealand, 16.3% of the population live in rural areas. To ensure equity to rural women, Soroptimus deliver projects which address a wide range of human rights issues. Today we'll look at um, education, health and economic empowerment. Education, the SI Ampang Educational Project. Two members and a group of volunteers from SI Ampang flew to Borneo and embarked on a four wheel drive big trip to the remote village of Kampang Garan. This is in the deepest jungle of Sabah to deliver laptops and other supplies to students. They traveled on winding roads for miles, then dirt tracks, which became impassable and then transferred to three narrow village boats with all their luggage. One of the boats capsized in the river. After making shore safely and retrieving all their goods, they then had to walk for hours until midnight to reach the village. The QR code will take you to the full video. Here you can see Alice and Sandra with the volunteers and the rescued wet laptops. And now we can see the students with their new laptops. It just goes to show you that Sir Optimus will go to great lengths to ensure delivery of projects which benefit our most vulnerable women and girls. Healthcare. Each of the 10 clubs in Fiji participated in Pink October with funding assistance from the Minister for Women. It was a month long campaign to raise awareness and provide breast screen examinations and health checks with a focus on rural women. Fiji ranks as the second in the world for breast cancer deaths. Why? Fear? They leave it too late for checks? They seek local remedies? And they fear abandonment by their husbands? Sport is a major passion in Fiji. So SI Suva identified that a three day football carnival to be held in Suva 
would bring families in from many parts of Fiji, especially rural women. They organised with the Department of Health to have the breast screening bus on site and doctors performed general health checks. The members organised the event, promoting and handling and the administration work on the day and hundreds were tested. An awareness and advertising campaign was run for several weeks prior to the two-day event in Bar, where the Women's Market Brewer and the Women's Forum Training Centre are located. Women from the rural areas come into Bar weekly to sell their produce. So on day one, they organised a festival march by community groups through the streets of Bar to the Market Square, and this raised breast cancer awareness and the free screening the next day. Day two, Market Day. SI Bar partnered with a group of medical team from New Zealand, together with the Sai Prima Foundation, um, and they used the mobile screening bus to conduct cancer screening, health checkups, breast examinations, pap smears and prostate checks. And more than 400 people were examined by the medical team that day. Economic empowerment. This project by the uh, SI region of Malaysia. So the project was to bring clean water to rural communities. This was in 2018, to the remote Pinan village of Long Tangent in Sarawak. This was selected because it had no access to clean water or sanitation. The village had no electricity, internet or clinics and is located eight hours by four wheel drive. There are 300 villagers who live here. At that time, they provided rainwater harvesting system, a small dam, they trained six women to um, learn about organic farming, who then educated a further 20 women. This resulted in a three acre farm being established, which produced enough vegetables to generate an income. But in 2021, torrential rains and massive floods caused widespread damage to the farm and crops, destroying the infrastructure installed in the first project. Once again, the women in the village were of course, adversely affected because they'd lost their income generating activity. So they partnered with Heineken Malaysia and the Spark Foundation to conduct a workshop to educate on flood risk and mitigation. They rebuilt the greenhouse, built a culvert around the farm to redirect flood borders, conducted an organic farming refresher course, and also had to prepare a simple business plan. And they also suggested that during monsoon, that they were um, look for to seek alternative income generating activities such as basket weaving, which would preserve their traditional ethnic crafts. So we can see that training and capacity building will help to eradicate, um, will help to educate and empower women to become more resilient in the face of disaster. They will learn to become more confident and self-reliant and will have a strong voice in their community on matters that affect their lives and their livelihoods. So I thank you for listening today and please visit siseap.org. Wonderful, wonderful presentations across the board. Thank you very much. I'd like to now open the session up to questions and answers. So the question is from Lisa to everyone. I'm just wondering what happens if one wants to help women in say Kurdistan, though we have no seroptimists in Iraq? Um, President Carolyn, would you like to make a comment? Mm. Yeah, it is not because we don't have a club uh, in that country that you cannot have a project there. Uh, after the blast in uh, Lebanon, Beirut, uh, remember, we also had their projects. And the very positive outcome is that we are now like having members who want to create a club there. So it's certainly not uh, impossible to have a project running in a country that has no Seroptimist Club yet, but maybe to come. Thank you. Are there any other questions to any of the panelists? If there's no further questions, I'll give closing remarks. And I personally feel like I've just been taken around the globe doing wonderful work by Seroptimus, which we are in 122 countries. So it, it's just fabulous to see. There's a common thread that I've noticed coming through all the presentations, um, starting with the resilience and capacity building in opening doors to a bright future. 
the SI President's Appeal, Education in Cambodia. It's just wonderful to see. Going on to SIA or SI Americas, um, their empowerment projects. So education is the key, the dream programs. We've been watching the numbers in the dream programs grow and grow every year. One is so you know that you're achieving something, which is women and girls. The rural recipients, to find a way how to participate with them is, is another key to educating women in the rural areas. The dream at be it, 98,000 girls, isn't that amazing? Economic empowerment and following also the SDGs, which we know is a, it's a great vision. Thank you, SIA. Um, SI of Africa in Uganda, the reusable sanitary napkins. What that brings, it allows women to go to school, be educated. It, it's just, there's so many things that we can do for our women. Um, Cambodia, the food, income and generation. Morocco, an amazing project of building a boarding school and bringing in the STEM projects, the STEM subjects, astrophysics. So there will be wonderful to see an opportunity to, uh, to come in to those girls to actually give them a roof, a food, everything to be able to study. Thank you, SI Africa. SIE, President Carolyn and Sandra, um, your five areas that you work through. And it just wonderful rural, the rural and circular energy, the start, the capital of 5,000 euros, uh, a project to help those women start in business and in partnership. Partnerships are coming in across the board. We cannot do it all. Bring in the partnerships to help everyone. Clean water, the sun water, what an amazing project. We should be able to maybe replicate that in so many areas across the world. A female engineer. Look what happens when we have women in STEM projects. Such a practical um, item that she's discovered. Drinkable. Health and education. It's, it's affected this one sun water. Uh, health, education, uh, finance. It, it can, it's the answer to so many things. The solar safe water system in Ukraine. We, we can't live without water. It, once again, it brings in partnerships in Ukraine and the partnerships that can help us benefit women and girls in rural areas. The disruption in agricultural, far less anything else in Ukraine. We all, our heart breaks as we see so much happening to everybody in Ukraine, far less the women and girls the battlefields that have had such an effect on rural women, dealing with mines instead of food, it's created a, a world shortage of food. It's just completely heartbreaking, to say the least. And Great Britain and Ireland, you're the rural women that are silent powerhouse. How wonderful is that? Wonderful, wonderful slides and colour and to see the women, but the feminisation of agriculture and their disadvantage of labour roles in the pat patriarchal society and illiteracy, where literacy is such a game changer in that area, where you could see the women starting to become empowered with their skills and to the gradual change through education and not to leave anybody behind. And SI Southeast Asia Pacific, the Asian region, healthcare, empowerment, education, participants in the rural villages in Malaysia, Fiji health, breast cancer screening and other health, te health tests helping through, the economic empowerment in Borneo and Sarawak. And a lot of you on this call I know joined us in uh, Sarawak in, a number of years ago which was quite lovely to see visitors. But the Malaysian, the greenhouse partnerships and education, training capacity building for the resilience of rural women. So that same thread, common threads coming through, the education the re to give the rural women the resilience. We are there to support and help and make things happen. 
to uh, wonderful presentations that took us around the globe to see what fantastic work to showcase the projects that we've been doing. Thank you very much to each of the presenters, each of the federations, and to keep up the wonderful good work. I also saw an opportunity where one of the questions that came in from Lisa just on Iraq, but it shows that seroptimists can actually support other seroptimists cross borders in opportunities to make things happen for women and girls around the world. Thank you very, very much for your participation. And I'd like to thank very much the support that we've got from our SI headquarters, our global executive director, Deborah, advocacy, Joe. Thank you, Joe, so, so much. Hannah, thank you, Hannah. And is Martina or? Yes, Martina's with me. Martina, <laughs> she's in the background. We can't yeah. see you, but I know you're there. Thank you very much. It's <laughs> wonderful to have the support.